Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff on behalf of StriveScan. Welcome to the college fairs of the greater Denver area. We've got a number of institutions this evening that are joining us. Uh, just as a reminder for all of the participants, you uh, will have your cameras turned off and you will be muted. You can interact with the institutions with the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the, they can answer throughout the evening. Without further ado, I'll get started. We'll turn it over to the University of Puget Sound. Great, thank you. All right, so let's get started here. Thanks everyone for joining. My name is Jasmine Estrada. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an admission counselor at University of Puget Sound. All right, we're gonna start off with location, just to get us all oriented. Uh, Tacoma is where University of Puget Sound is located, right on the body of water called the Puget Sound, where we get our namesake from. About 30-ish miles uh, south of Seattle, uh, but more importantly, 30 to 40 minutes from the airport um, and shuttles are provided from campus. So when we think about Tacoma, here are just a few fast facts of the city. Um, I would call it medium and really mean it. Um, over 200,000 people, um, lots of access to the outdoors, um, and it's a city of neighborhoods. So that's how I think of it when describing to folks who have not been there or to folks who have been there. Um, and when we think about campus, uh, camp campus is located in the north end of Tacoma. This is an aerial shot of campus. Um, if you walk about 15 minutes in um, really either direction, you're gonna run into grocery stores, um, coffee shops, thrift stores, record stores, restaurants, I mean, you name it. There's lots to do in driving distance, walking distance, biking, rolling distance from campus. Um, and the Puget Sound you can see in this picture as well is about a um, 20 minute walk to the waterfront or a five minute drive. Lots of student, students spend time along the waterfront and it's uh, truly gorgeous. All right, so University of Puget Sound is a liberal arts uh, small school. And so uh, what does that mean, right? We really focus on involvement both inside and outside the classroom. A well-rounded experience um, is really what we're rooted in. And so um, how do we do that? What are ways we do that? I'm gonna tell you throughout this presentation. Um, and so college is so much more than just earning credits to graduate. Uh, graduate. Um, and to start off, we do have a live on requirement. So you do live on campus your first two years at University of Puget Sound. Um, junior year, it's kind of split. Some stay on, some move off. And then uh, mostly seniors do live off campus um, right, um, right within a two mile radius of campus. Students aren't going very far. Um, and we have tons and tons of clubs. I would like to just point out Ultimate Frisbee and Acapella and Beekeeping are a few of my favorites. This is a typical residence hall room. If you've done a college visit or you've done a virtual visit, um, we're pretty comparable to what you've maybe seen. Um, rooms are pretty spacious at Puget Sound. In your first year, you will have a roommate. Um, and um, after your first year, you have access to live in a suite, a flat, a house. Uh, the options really do get better. Um, but this is just a typical snapshot to those who haven't um, been to campus or maybe visiting later. OK, I know I'm talking fast, but here we go. Stay, stay with me. Um, and so um, in addition to the residential requirement of living on campus for two years, a big part of our community comes from the fact that we're small. And that, those are the numbers you see on the screen. Um, the average class size is around 17, uh, 2,000 undergraduates and a couple hundred graduate uh, students in programs of physical therapy, occupational therapy, public health, and counseling and teaching. Um, and what this essentially means and what I'm trying to say is um, you really get to know your peers and you really get to know your faculty in a very collaborative, supportive environment at Puget Sound. Okay. So um, here's a glance at uh, what you could be studying. So Puget Sound professors teach around 12, over 1,200 courses, um, and we offer over 50 majors and areas of study. Um, we have a core curriculum that consists of eight classes, and so um, you'll complete that along with classes in your major and electives. Um, about one third of students end up double majoring um, or double minoring at Puget Sound. And if you do want to learn more about our School of Music or School of Business, hit me up on the chat because we can definitely talk more in depth um, on there. Okay, 
So not all learning happens in the classroom as um, me and I imagine a lot of my colleagues after me are gonna talk about. Um, and so what do we mean by that? So learning by doing. Uh, this is a very brief roadmap of what that looks like at Puget Sound. So students learn through internships, through studying abroad, through research, through community service. Um, and so much of that is uh, just culminated intentionally throughout um, all of the university planning that we do. And so I do want to highlight um, our Pacific Rim program, which is a nine month study abroad program. Um, and it's uh, along the um, Asian nations of um, the Pacific Rim. And um, by the end of it, you earn a minor in Asian studies. And the year prior to going, you do a lot of cultural competency training and take classes with the people and professors you're going abroad with. All right, so we're gonna transition over to a little bit about application and financial aid. And then um, I'm gonna pass it along very soon. All right, so what do we need from you? So we are on the common application. We require um, your school is gonna send us a school report and your official transcripts. We are test optional. So whatever is your best academic self, that's what we wanna see in your application. We need a counselor evaluation and a teacher evaluation. And we are doing both in-person and virtual interviews. And we are also open for campus visits. All right, we have uh, three applications, two deadlines. November 1st is gonna be your early action, early decision. And January 15th is gonna be your regular decision with us. Very briefly about financial aid, um, all admitted students are um, awarded merit scholarships that range up to $30,000 per year, renewable over four years. And then you can apply for music, theater, debate, and art scholarships. Um, and those are available on our website. And I can talk more about that in the chat. At the time of admission, if you have a 3.6 um, unweighted cumulative GPA, you can expect in that range $23,000 or higher. And that's called our Dean Scholarship Assurance. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean if you have that GPA that you won't um, receive that scholarship. It's just one way to signal. All right, and then lastly, uh, we have some open houses uh, coming up. And so here are the dates for those. If you are able, are able to attend an on-campus event or a virtual of, or um, one of these hope, um, open house events and you apply by November 1st, we are able to give you a visit scholarship of um, $4,000, uh, which is $1,000 per year. Um, and with that, very quickly, hit me up on the chat. I'll be here for the rest of the time. And I am going to um, unshare my screen. Thanks, Jasmine. Appreciate yeah. your sharing this evening. Next up, we have Washington State University. Got to remember to unmute. There we go. All right. Hello, folks. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Micah DeMarco, and I'm with Washington State University. Uh, just like my colleague did, I'm going to start with a beautiful map of the state of Washington and talk a little bit about where we're located. We're in eastern Washington, right on the border of Idaho, so opposite end of the state from where my colleague just uh, was just talking about in Tacoma, Seattle area. We are located in a small town called Pullman, Washington. City of Pullman is two-thirds college students. My favorite stat is when school school is in session, the average age of somebody living in Pullman is 22.1 years old. It is incredibly young. Um, because it's a college town, we're also incredibly safe. We're going to be one of the safest schools in the country, which especially as a female uh, in Pullman, I truly enjoyed. Lots of stats and figures up there for you all to take a glance at. Essentially, um, the big one to take away from this is our students are coming to us from all over the place. And because we're a college town, everybody's new to Pullman. There are very few folks that are from Pullman. Um, and so it kind of evens the playing field, whether you're from Colorado or Hawaii or Seattle, you just feel new to Pullman. And so it makes the experience uh, fairly unique. A little bit about things to do in Pullman now that I've scared you with the small town um, knowledge. We are um, a pretty big school for sports. I do not want to talk about football right now. You can Google our record and discover why. Um, but the games are still really fun to go to. Uh, all of our athletics are fun to go to, Pac-12, Division I. Um, lots of clubs, sororities, all of those things up there that you'll see. One that I do like to talk about is Greek life. We are one of just three schools in the country that has an increasing number of students involved in Greek life. So that'll be pretty big at WSU, about one in three students. And then 
then a lot of cool entertainment. Uh, right before lockdown happened with COVID, we had Billie Eilish and Khalid here on campus in the same week. I've seen Snoop Dogg, Mac Miller, uh, lots of cool folks. So small town, but there's a lot going on. Academics, we've got over 200 fields of study. Uh, some of our biggest will be business, communication, engineering, and then anything within the pre-health uh, space. We've got our own vet school, med school, nursing school, and pharmacy school. Probably most exciting for you all to know is when a student applies to WSU, they tell us what they think they wanna study, we don't use that in the admissions process. We know statistically two thirds of you will switch your major. So we don't hold that against you. You can switch as much as you need or want to. We're also tier one for research. We've got study abroad across the world. All of my colleagues will say similar things. So I won't stick too long on this, but no, we've got it. Application for those of you who are seniors, apps are open now. And our application is extraordinarily easy. We're just looking at your transcripts. There are no SAT or ACTs uh, required. We don't have essays, letters of recommendation, personal statements. It's truly just your transcripts and that application itself. If it takes you longer than 30 minutes to fill out, you're probably using somebody else's application and not ours. We're looking at the classes you've taken, strength of coursework, grade trends, and then our average unweighted GPA last year was a 3.46, but those of you, just like my uh, colleague from UPS just said, those of you with a 3.6 or above, that seems to be the magic number for the day, uh, those of you with a 3.6 or above do get automatically admitted to the university. So as soon as we get your app, you'll hear back from us with a yes if that's you. We also have an honors college, typically the top uh, three to seven percent of applicants will be in honors at WSU. Transfer credit, I like to put it up here just so your parents can take screenshots or you can copy and paste those links. If you've got transfer credits, which you probably do, we'll give you as many as you've earned. Cost of attendance is up here. I just want you to look super quick at that tuition for a non-Washington resident really quick. We're gonna talk about WUI, which is why I want you to look at that tuition. We are a WUI school. We have two different scholarships that an out-of-state student can receive automatically. One of those being the WUI. So for a freshman student, those of you with a three, to a 339 would get $7,000 out of that off of that, excuse me, out of state tuition number. Those of you with a 34 or above unweighted GPA would get to knock $11,000 off of that out of state award. Uh, so, or excuse me, tuition. So, I'll have you take a look at it again. Remember, three to a 339 gets $7,000 off of tuition. Those with a 34 or above, 11,000 less. Those are automatic awards. Nothing you need to do to tell me you want that money. I assume you want that money fill out the application, uh, and as long as you qualify and apply by January 31, that scholarship is yours. We also have one scholarship app. That's when you get to tell me about extracurriculars, uh, community service, times you've overcome adversity, and we'll enter you for an additional 700 scholarships, all of which will be stackable with the WUI. Last but not least, our deadlines. January 31 is our big deadline to keep in mind. March 15th is the date um, that you can submit updated transcripts to us. Um, and so that's a really great opportunity for students who want to apply and hear back from WSU, but plan on rocking their senior year, getting their grades up a little bit, and maybe getting into a higher scholarship bracket. And then May 1 is the national confirmation deadline. It's the deadline we use. All my contact information is up there. I am in Colorado right now. I'm actually sitting here in my hotel room. So look forward to seeing a few more of you this week and I hope to hear from a lot of you guys soon. Thanks, Micah, appreciate that. As a reminder, as they've mentioned, you can ask questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Next up, we have Whitworth University. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I'm Sean Tyson from Whitworth University. Uh, we are just 90 minutes north of Washington State University, so you can kind of know where we're at. We'll talk about location a little bit more as we go. Um, but for starters, just talking about our mission at Whitworth, uh, we really focus on an education of mind and heart being a smaller private Christ Christian liberal arts school. Um, we want to focus on your academics, but also how you grow as a person and as an individual during your time at college, because it's a really developmental time in life for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're a smaller school, uh, quite a bit smaller uh, than Wazoo, but similar to um, Puget Sound, uh, about 2,300 students, that smaller student to faculty ratio, most of your classes being 30 students or fewer. Um, we really try to get our students on on-time graduation in four years. As you can see, most of our students are doing that. Uh, and then 95% of our students are in a job or in graduate school or maybe military service, Teach for America, things like that. 
within nine months. And I think a quote is the best way to describe that. So Whitworth has connected me with a lot of people and I'm continuously growing because of the impact they've had on me. My advisor, Dr. Abby in the health sciences department has had a significant impact on me. She has been guiding me by giving me helpful advice, giving me an opportunity to be her TA and con connecting me with resources at Whitworth uh, to gain more experience. And I'm thankful for that. So this quote by Baruch is not a uh, rare, uh, this is pretty common at Whitworth because students have uh, such access to their professors, uh, both academically, but also if you wanna grab a cup of coffee with them in the coffee shop. A little bit about our class profile here. The things I want to point out, because you can obviously read those numbers on the screen, the middle 50%, is we do accept that weighted GPA. Um, and we do super score for students who have taken multiple attempts of the SAT or ACT. We'll combine those sections, the best sections from those multiple attempts together to be your one super score. Uh, we're test optional, have been for about 15 years. I will talk about that more with app requirements. 100 plus majors and programs, lots to choose from here. Again, being a liberal arts university, we have a plethora of options for you and you don't have to come in declared and uh, you can switch around. Uh, I switched three times in my first few semesters at Whitworth and it all worked out for me. Uh, business, biology, health science, education, psychology, and computer science are some of our larger programs, but we love STEM, we love humanities, everything in between. Um, getting outside of the classroom, my colleagues have already talked about this. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but we offer study abroad. About 50% of students do that by the time they graduate from Whitworth and these other experiential learning opportunities. Um, I do want to talk about this quote here, um, but we have... Uh, I'm just going to read this really quick. My dream job is to be a travel maternity nurse. During Jan term 2020, got the opportunity to shadow nurses in a hospital through Whitworth's Medical Spanish Study Abroad Program in Costa Rica. i uh, never been more reassured in my pursuit of nursing as my career. Um, and just for the sake of time, I'm not going to finish reading that, but really those study abroad opportunities and experiential learning can help a ton uh, when students are trying to discover what they want to do and get experience in their fields and travel and have great experiences uh, for in, uh, around the world. Um, we are residential schools, so students live on campus for their first two years, 10 residence halls that students can choose from. Um, over uh, 50 plus clubs that kind of uh, rotate some of them, but then there's other consistent ones like Intramural Frisbee Club or Black Student Union, Hawaiian Club, Business Club, um, on and on. Um, intramurals, uh, again, intramural frisbee or basketball or uh, soccer, volleyball, whatever uh, you want we have here. And then finally, um, really recruiting students from diverse backgrounds to be here on our campus, but also providing ways for students to um, express themselves and tell their stories and get involved um, in different cultural diversity related events and clubs here on campus is very important to our community. Uh, we're Division Three NCAA school here, nine schools in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, 21 in uh, Washington, Oregon, I should say. 21 sports. Women's lacrosse is our newest. About four years ago, we started that program. Um, and we've won the Northwest Conference All Sports Trophy for 12 consecutive years. So if you are a student who's looking to play at a D3 school in the Northwest, uh, we are uh, very competitive, if not the best program up here. Um, art, music, and theater. I won't go into the details, but we do have them. They're alive and well here at Whitworth. And a big bonus, we offer scholarships in these areas uh, as well. So if you are talented, and even if it's not your major, uh, we encourage students to um, audition for and apply for these scholarships. I mentioned we're a Christian university. Um, the one main thing I want to highlight about that, because we could talk about this for the whole time, is that all spiritual life uh, kind of activities here at Whitworth are optional. Um, I would say about 70 to 75 percent of our students, uh, maybe even closer to 80 percent, come from Christian backgrounds. But we have students from other faith backgrounds, non-faith backgrounds, just kind of, um, you know, but they are coming to Whitworth for a lot of different reasons, academics, academics athletics, whatever that looks like for them. Uh, but Whitworth's a place where we want to be opening and welcome to students from all uh, different walks of life. Uh, we're in Spokane, like I mentioned, 90 minutes north of WSU, uh, two and a half hour flight from Denver. Um, and kind of the, the, this metro population number is like Spokane and Spokane Valley and Coeur d'Alene, kind of this whole area, but we are the second largest metro area um, in the state of Washington. Tons of resources, both um, for, you know, for shopping and restaurants and entertainment and also outdoor recreation as well. Um, so our application is free. The only requirements are the application, either Whitworth app or Common app. 
transcript, uh, an unofficial one works in the process. And then those writing sample test scores and academic recommendations are all optional in the process. Deadlines, I'll just hit that November 15th one is our first one, would love for you to apply by then. Um, but March 1st is our final deadline as well. And May 1 is that enrollment deposit deadline. 100% of students receive financial aid. On average, we gave about $36,000 almost away last year in scholarships and grants. Um, and here is the range of options, uh, whitworth.edu slash scholarships. You can see all of this information, but that main scholarship's twelve dollars to $27,000 um, automatically with your application. Everyone's gonna get a $3,000 housing grant for living on campus. And then come visit, uh, we have a $1,000 uh, visit scholarship for you. So. Thanks so much. That's all I've got, and I will pass it on over. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Pacific Lutheran University. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. And if you're in the Denver area, I hope you enjoyed the rain we got today. It made my Washington heart so happy. Uh, so Oh, I'm just clicking the wrong buttons over here. I apologize. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kaylee Sadoff. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a regional admission counselor. So I'm actually based in Colorado and get to just tell people that PLU exists. Um, I have to say I'm loving these presentations. Usually I'm in a space with other schools that are not Division Three or liberal arts. And so that's so fun that my colleagues have been talking about that. And so a lot of this will probably sound pretty familiar to you. Uh, PLU is located in Tacoma, Washington, on the exact opposite side of town as UPS, University of Puget Sound. Uh, and like my colleague mentioned, there is a ton to do in Tacoma. Uh, one of my favorite things about Tacoma is that it's close to Seattle, it's close to the airport, but you don't have to be there unless you want to. There's a ton that you can do in the downtown Tacoma area, a lot of outdoor exploration too, just with Tacoma as your home base. Uh, we are the closest school to Mount Rainier, which is somehow an active volcano slash glacier slash 14er. I don't know how those coexist together, uh, but for my Coloradans, you can still get up to the mountains. They do exist in Washington as well as in Colorado. Uh, just an overview of our student body. We have about 3,000 total students at PLU with an average class size of 20 and a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, that just means that your professors know you. So if you're applying to graduate programs or struggling in a class or just want to say hello, uh, your professors do know who you are and you get that individualized attention. Uh, however, campus isn't small enough that you know everyone, and so there still are opportunities for you to meet people throughout your four years um, while being in a small community. Uh, about 38% of our student body identifies as students of color, about one third first generation students, and then the average weighted GPA for our incoming students is a 3.70. Um, we do use your weighted GPA for your applications, and when I go into the checklist there, I'll touch on that a little bit more. Uh, we offer eight different divisions and schools. As a liberal arts school, everyone takes classes from each of these areas. So even if you're a chemistry major, you're going to take some social sciences, humanities, arts, perhaps business. And so there's a lot of flexibility in finding what you'd like to study. We do have over 40 majors, over 50 minors, everything from criminal justice to nursing, education, music, a lot of different opportunities to get involved academically across the board. Uh, in terms of sports, we are a Division Three school, just like a couple of the previous presenters. Uh, there's kind of two main parts to that. One is that if you get hurt or want to study abroad or need to focus on your classes, or just maybe you aren't passionate about the sport anymore, you're not losing a scholarship. Uh, but everyone on your team is there because they love the sport enough to take the time to do it. Uh, PLU has over 250 conference championships. Our men and women's soccer teams were just picked to win conference again this fall. And so we do still have competitive athletic programs, just like the previous presenters. Um, but in a Division three level, there, you can still compete in these different varsity sports. We also have intramurals and club sports if you're interested in lacrosse, wrestling, um, water polo is one of our intramurals. That one always is kind of fun to me. Uh, 
Uh, next, we have our involvement. And so PLU has over 70 clubs, ranging from our pre-law association to our hammocking club. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to get involved. And if there's a club that you'd like to start, it's very easy. I know I've been getting some questions about chess club, I think inspired by the Queen's Gambit, uh, but I'm not sure that we have a chess club. So if you get 10 signatures and an advisor, you can make a club that easily uh, for other students to get involved as well. This slide's been struggling today. It's my study away slide, I believe. I don't know why it's not loading, um, but PLU does a lot of study away, study abroad programming. And so uh, if you are interested for every major, you can study away, study abroad. We do say study away because we offer local programs in addition to international ones, just recognizing we can learn from people up the street from us as much as someone around the world. Uh, we have, I do have a map on this one. Let me see if I can pull it up the other way. I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, here we go. Nope, we'll look at the little one, if that's all right with you. <laughs> but we're in the top 20 schools nationally for the highest percentage of students who study abroad. Uh, you can go for every single major your financial aid does apply. Um, we also have programs like Peace Corps Prep or Nonprofit Leadership or different global study programs uh, that a lot of our students do choose to participate in around the world. Sorry about that, everyone. How fun. Uh, and so in terms of our application itself, uh, PLU is on the Common App. It is free to apply every day. I know those Colorado free app days are coming up next month. For our application checklist, we do need a transcript. Again, we use your weighted GPA. Uh, we require at least one letter of recommendation. We will accept up to three. Uh, I think I received seven from someone last year, which is awesome, but definitely not necessary. Uh, your essay, your application itself, and then we are test optional. And so if you really would like us to see your test scores, we will absolutely consider them, but you're still eligible for up to full tuition, up to our highest scholarship, just based on your weighted GPA. If you weren't able to take the test, didn't have access to prep classes, or just don't think it's a good representation of your academics. We are on a rolling admission cycle. So if you apply by October 15th, you'll get a response by November 15th, including your academic scholarship amount. Those scholarships do range up to $27,000 a year, just based on your GPA. And over 97% of our students receive financial aid and the average cost after aid is less than $22,000. So we're not a part of WUI, but private schools can still give a lot of financial aid to get that down to similar to an in-state rate for your out-of-state education. Um, if y'all have any questions, please let me know. I'll throw my info in the chat. Uh, thank you for your patience with my weird presentations this evening, and I'll pass it off to the next presenter. Thanks, Kaylee, appreciate that. Next up, we have Western Washington University. Thanks so much, Jeff. Hi, everyone, and good evening. My name is Tina Castillo, and I am representing Western Washington University. Thanks so much for being here. We are going to travel about two hours up north from Interstate 5, um, from up north from Tacoma, I should say, um, to beautiful Bellingham, Washington. I just absolutely love this image of gorgeous campus here. Um, that's campus right in the middle. So yes, Bellingham is a coastal city. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but I love that downtown Bellingham is walking distance from our campus. And that is Mount Baker, um, Coma Coulson in the background. So we are right in between the mountains and the bay. Just some quick facts about Western Washington University. We are a public liberal arts university. Um, so you will get a well-rounded liberal arts education, be really good at public speaking, communication, critical thinking, all that good stuff while also being an expert in your academic major of choice. And I'll talk about that in a, min in a moment. Um, compared to other universities, we're considered medium size. Our enrollment is 15,000 students. Every fall, we welcome about 3,200 incoming freshmen, so pretty big than some of those other um, private colleges you've been hearing about, but we offer really a lot of ways to get plugged into your classes and feel really connected in your learning at Western. So you see that in um, our undergraduate focus, 93% of our students are undergraduates at Western, our average class size, student to faculty ratio, um, etc. 
Okay, I love talking about Bellingham. I live downtown Bellingham. I love that I'm able to walk to work on campus, but also just go right down the stairs to my favorite tea shop or go down the block and get a delicious Peruvian sandwich. Um, Bellingham so great. Um, getting to Bellingham from the Colorado area, you have the option to either fly into the from Denver to Seattle. And from there, you can drive an hour and a half up north to Bellingham, or you can just do a quick 30 minute connecting flight from um, Seattle to Bellingham. Um, you'll also see we're close to Canada. It's about 20 minutes away, the border. Um, so Vancouver is actually closer to Bellingham um, than Seattle is close to Bellingham. That's a fun fact. Um, Bellingham is such a great place to call home, whether that's just temporary as a college student or permanently. We get a lot of folks who are like, yeah, I moved here for college and I never left. Um, with good reason, we enjoy these national recognitions for being an outdoor lover's paradise. So whether that's sailing, kayaking, or getting your snow fix in with going up to Mount Baker Ski Resort for your skiing and snowboarding activities. So Western is a liberal arts university. Um, we really have some of the characteristics of a larger university. This is one of them. We offer over 200 academic majors to choose from. They're organized through seven colleges. We started as a teaching college. However, we also have one of the oldest environmental colleges in the country with our Huxley College of the Environment. Our business college continues to grow as well as our STEM program. So science and engineering, pre-med, we're actually getting a new building on campus to add more lab spaces for those programs. We really encourage hands-on research at Western. Because we're undergraduate focused, we offer opportunities to do academic research alongside professors, get professional internships, all that good stuff that's really going to help you um, graduate to the next step. Um, so we've been nationally recognized by the survey of earned doctorates for students who go on to earn um, their doctorate degree. We're also recognized as a first gen forward institution for supporting our first generation students as well. So very excited about that. We really want students to check out the honors program. It's an amazing opportunity to get the most out of your time at Western. It's really like attending a, a smaller private college within this larger institution. So. It, satis it works with any major. There's no extra cost to do the honors program. You get to satisfy your general courses through honors. They're smaller class sizes, the best professors. Um, however, there is a separate application process. So check that out. Okay, so being medium sized, you coming in with about 3,000 other students, probably wondering how you're going to make friends and fit in, especially coming from out of state, right? How are you going to find your home away from home? Um, we don't have a Greek system on our campus. Nor do we have a football team, however, we are division two varsity um, athletic school, so we do have some really great um, athletics at Western. But where student life really shines is through our associated student clubs, so our clubs really satisfy you know getting together around some sort of shared um, identity, uh, maybe a faith based identity or a multicultural identity, um, perhaps a club related to your academic major, so we have pre med club pre med club psychology club um, and we have tons of clubs for hobbies, activities, and other interests. Um, living on campus is optional, but about 88% of first year freshmen live on campus, so we do save you a spot if you want to live on campus. Um, our outdoor center does a great job of getting students out in the outdoors, teaching them new skills, um, especially if you've never been out on the sea before and you want to try sailing. Come to the outdoor, come to the outdoor center, we got you. Study abroad is very popular at Western. Um, a lot of our students are really interested in what's going on around the world. They're globally minded. We're nationally recognized for the number of graduates who go on to the Peace Corps. Our students want to explore and they want to give back. So study abroad is a really great way to do that. We have our own application on our website, so check that out. Transcripts are required. We also want an essay and activities list. Test scores optional. Letters of recommendation are optional. $65 application fee. Apply by November 1 for our early action decision or January 31st. We are on the WUI, so WUI school. Woohoo! And last but not least, contact me if you have any questions at all. I'd really be excited to hear from you. So thank you all so much. Thanks, Tina. Appreciate that. The last institution we'll hear from tonight is DigiPen, Institute of Technology. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Cooper, and I'm the Assistant Director of Outreach here at DigiPen. And so I'm happy to chat with you today tonight about our school. Um, so I'm just going to switch over to share my screen. Just one second. All right. All right, so a little bit about DigiPen. We were founded in 1988, actually in Vancouver, BC, and we've been in our current location since 1998. We're a private four-year college that focuses on computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, as well as music and sound design. We're actually the first college in the world to ever offer a game development program, which is a real-time interactive simulation degree. We are located in Redmond, Washington, so to continue your tour through the state of Washington, we're about 16 miles east of Seattle, so on the opposite side of Lake Washington, students can easily get into the city to um, do a variety of activities, so we're really close to downtown Seattle to see the Space Needle, Pike Place Market, throw fish around. Um, we are close to all the places that my colleagues have mentioned. Um, so really close to Woodby Island, you can take a ferry over to an, um, one of the many islands, including Woodby. Um, also, students go into Seattle quite a bit um, for big gaming conferences and other similar events. So um, the Penny Arcade Expo and Emerald City Comic Con are big fun events for our students to attend. In the city of Redmond, our neighbors are big game companies. Um, one of the big companies is Microsoft. They're actually our biggest employer and about three miles from campus. Nintendo is also in the city of Redmond and our founder and president is also one of the co-founders of Nintendo Software Technology. Within 25 miles of campus, there's about 350 game related studios and about 100 tech companies. So if you are looking to be in this industry, Digi um, DigiPen is in the right location for you to find those different uh, companies. Um, and those companies visit campus quite a bit um, and visit for our career fair and internship fair every year. Um, so a little bit about DigiPen by the numbers. Um, like I said, we're the first school to offer a game development program. On average, class sizes are about 18 students. We have about uh, just under 1,200 students, so definitely a smaller institution, but a great opportunity to connect with your faculty and your um, peers. Faculty to student ratio is 10 to 1. Um, our, we offer eight undergraduate programs and two graduate programs. You do apply specifically to one program here at DigiPen. And our graduates are credited on um, uh, shipping over 1,600 professional titles. So if you've played a game during quarantine, more than likely one of our alums has worked on that game. DigiPen is ranked as the top school in Washington State um, in Georgetown University's Center of Education study on return on investment. So your time and money and energy put into your education here at DigiPen really pays off um, over 30 years post-graduation. So we're really proud that our alumni are doing well um, because of their education here. So to share a little bit of our degree programs, um, DigiPen, like I said, has eight programs, five of which are Bachelor of Science. One is a straight Bachelor of Science in Computer Science program. You can work on a data systems project um, or something similar. Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Machine Learning is predictive algorithms. Um, so that would be self-driving cars and similar things that we're seeing currently um, coming out of the technology world. Um, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Game Design. This is learning how to think about the user, but we'll also learn in computer science. The partner in that program is the Bachelor of Art in Game Design. Those students are learning how to create a game, um, thinking about the user. Do the rules make sense? Do the levels make sense? So they take a lot of psychology degree uh, classes, um, storyboarding, things like that. Real-time interactive simulation, like I said, was our flagship degree. This is a graphics programming degree. Students are learning how to program a game engine. Um, so if you've used Unity or Unreal, um, these students are learning how to create their own version of that. Um, we have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Art and Animation, and this is actually our largest program at DigiPen. These students are taking pretty foundational classes in their first year and then jump into digital art, taking 2D and 3D um, classes in their second year and moving on from there. We have two uh, music and sound programs. One is a Bachelor of Arts in Music and Sound Design, traditional music degree, um, 
you have a tutor in your instrument of choice or if you're a singer, uh, students take theory composition classes, um, but they also learn how to create sound. So they may not be able to go record the sound of a tree falling, but they learn how to recreate that sound in a studio. Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Digital Audio. This is, um, again, a partner to real-time interactive simulation. So two kind of partner degrees here. Um, these students are programming the sound engine. So they're the ones making sure if you're playing a car game um, and the car goes into a tunnel, there's an echo. They're programming that echo to take place when it should take place. At DigiPen, we teach um, in a way that allows you to practice everything that you're learning in the classroom. So you will be in lecture classes, have tests, all those traditional things um, that you would see at any other college. Um, the cool part of DigiPen is that you then get to work on a project with your peers. In your first year, you'll work on a project with students within your own degree program. In your second year, you will work on a team that are that is interdisciplinary. So students from different degree programs gather to work on a project. This could be a video game. This could also be an animation. Um, so really different ways to um, learn and do that. Uh, our admissions requirements are listed here. We are an optional test school currently. Um, personal essay, application, high school transcripts. Each program does have its own admissions requirements. And so those are all listed on our website. Bachelor of Science all require, except game design, uh, at least pre-calculus. The other three programs do require a portfolio that you submit. Um, a few updates that we've made it due to COVID. Um, our application is open and the, the priority deadline is February 1st. This gives you the most access to housing and resources. And our application won't close until July. A few ways to connect with us. Campus is open for tours, preview days, um, but we have lots of online events as well. And our contact information is right there, but I'll put it in the chat as well. Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate that very much. Well, I want to invite all the representatives back on screen real quick. We've got a couple of minutes left. So I thought we would, excuse me, I thought we would have them give us an answer to the question of what is the one thing that they want you to remember this evening about their school? So we'll go in the order we presented. So Jasmine, we'll let you uh, start us off there. Cool. I'll do uh, something light and fun and something I didn't talk about. Um, so if you are a Puget Sound student, you get uh, free admission to the Tacoma Art Museum, which is located downtown and is incredible. And we have a partnership. So um, that's super fun. Very fun. What about you, Micah? I'll say what I said before, which is that we're a college town and you guys are obviously looking at out-of-state schools. Uh, and so why not go to a school that you will feel just as out of place as those from Seattle, Tacoma, or Spokane even. Very nice. Sean, what do you got for us? Yeah, um, we have a tradition with a name that might stick in your brain. It's called catching a virgin pine cone. And that's a pine cone that falls from a tree before it hits the ground. So students try to do that before they graduate. I never did, but I had friends who did, and they would paint them gold, frame them, hang them somewhere. So I don't think you'll forget that name. There we go. Kaylee, Pacific Lutheran, please. Yeah, um, I think my biggest takeaway from PLU as a student and an admission counselor is that everyone can study away. Um, you can learn from other people for every major. We were the first school to have classes on all seven continents at the same time with students and faculty. Uh, and so studying away all around the world, anywhere is definitely doable for every student. Very fun. Tina, Western Washington. Our students, our students are what make Western. We love our students. Our students are amazing. Um, they're at the forefront of lots of different social causes, both in our neighborhood and community and around the world. They're the ones who got funding for our new multicultural center, which is beautiful and amazing inclusive space. So if you're passionate about something, come to Western. We'd love to have you. Very nice. Michelle, wrap us up. Yeah, I'll mention two of my favorite clubs um, that students participate in. One is Outbreak um, that I'm hoping will come back really soon. Um, they, it is the zombies versus humans nerf war that happens in the parking lot um, every fall and spring semester. And then the Cage Club, students watch Nicolas Cage movie once a week um, as their way to kind of decompress from class. So. There we go. I love it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening on behalf of the uh, six institutions as well as StriveScan. Thank you very much for being here. There will be additional sessions tomorrow night. 
So feel free to sign up for those. Um, have a great evening and good luck in your college search process. Bye-bye, everybody.